Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Dark Sage Walker and I have laundry to do. But before I start on my laundry, I definitely want to get in here and get a little Wizard of Legend done. So today we are going for the classic soundtrack. And I wanted to take a take a quick moment to I want to take a quick moment to highlight something that I think is important to point out. So, Tempo Rogue decreases cooldowns by about 15% and increases run speed by 10%. We compare that to the Venture Rogue, which doesn't do cooldowns by as much, but it still does a good job while also doing run speed and damage. So, whether or not you use Venture or Tempo is really dependent on what's more important for your build. Do you really need that additional damage in exchange for being a bit of a glass cannon? Or would you, ra or would you rather have a little bit more HP and a little bit faster cooldown reduction? Or I guess I should say better cooldown reduction. Versus having that extra damage and, you know, you're not having to be as spongy. For what it's worth, you could probably do a lot of the same builds that I've been doing with Tempo doing them with venture <clears throat> but your <laughs> but your mileage may may vary a little bit now personally i like to use venture for things like summoner builds where where yeah you're not <clears throat> you're not going to get as much of a cooldown reduction but your summons are going to be doing more damage and you'll still have that run speed to fall back on to run around your enemies and slap them with your other spells Whereas Tempo excels at being able to make a few more mistakes, so you can typically run run builds like the one I ran last time, and not have to worry about how often you're getting tagged. <clears throat> at least not as much. Now, when it comes to the high tempo build, I, I will show you what I've kind of come to prefer with it. I prefer Flame Cleaver. And here, let's see, what was the other spell I really I really liked that had charges? Let's see, you could use Fading Petal. Um, Aqua Vortex works off of charges, so that would, that would be a particularly good one to try out with this. Let's see, Creeping Tendrils for extreme, for extreme melee. Water Prison works off of charges, and that's a pretty good one. Now, when I say charges, I should point out that I mean charges <laughs> charges that don't all go off right away, so... <clears throat> and even though this is kind of an iffy example, I could also I point out Bouncing Bubble, because even though you can fire one bubble at a time with it, you typically don't want to do that. But a much better example would be... If I can find it. Bubble Barrage, where you press the button once and then all of the charges just go off immediately. <clears throat> so that's what I mean by charges, is spells that have multiple castings that, <clears throat> that you can do one at a time. Starbolt is another example of one where you can do it one at a time. But it also has the ability to do rapid fire like Bubble Barrage. Like that. So take it with a grain of salt, that's just one thing you can do. But, I, I wanted to bring that up because I was thinking, okay, I guess Ion Spike is a... Oh no, Ion Spike isn't really the same thing. But yeah, you get the idea. You get the idea. Or this is another one that's That's another one that's a pretty good example. <clears throat> so, just something to think about, but I'm bringing that up because I'm I was thinking about it and 
As much as I like Cyclone Boomerang, I think Flame Cleaver is, at least in my opinion, the better <clears throat> the better spell for this for this sort of playstyle. I just personally think that it's that it does a slight it does a little bit better of a job. And if I were to choose another spell to use that has a similar sort of mechanic, I would choose like you know, Radiant Beat is good for controlling an area, so that's a good one for that. But I also really like, if I can find it, Storm Draft. Because this, this has a good amount of knockback and higher damage per hit. So, something to think about. So, am I going to do another high tempo build today? I was thinking about it, but I think no. Today I want to do a. <clears throat> Today I want to do something with the fear with the fury robe. <clears throat> We're going to attempt to do some sign do a little bit of signature spam. <coughs> Pardon me. So let's grab some spells that that we know are going to work well with this. Now, the whole, th the whole idea behind Signature Spam is that you can use whatever, whatever you feel is most, is most appropriate to your playstyle. There really is no right or wrong answer, provided that you're using a... Provided that you're using a signature that you're comfortable with. Like, you certainly don't have to be using, like, the most popular signature or... Or just whatever. You use whatever you feel comfortable with. Huh. Pardon me. So today I think we're gonna go soon we're gonna go Storm Mage Special. We're going to use water, we're gonna use electricity, and it's gonna be fun. What do we want to use for our starting relic? As per as per usual, there are a few that are really good starts. I think today we take Jade's Jewel Tiara. And as far as why I wanted to spend some time talking about how I prefer to structure my high tempo build recommendation, you know, especially when I was when I decided I wanted to do something different, it was mostly because those were questions I was asking, I was kind of asking myself as I was recording yesterday is what sorts of things would it be best to talk about when it comes to this build? Like what what are some outlaw what are some outlying ideas that might be good to might be good to talk about. <laughs> and those were some of the things that I had that I had come up with. So yeah, I know it seems a little bit random when we were when we're planning on doing a build that has nothing to do with the with that high tempo build recommendation I did yesterday. But I think it fits because it's because it's still something that des that kind of deserves a little bit of time to be spoken. Now, as you can see, Twin Turbines just does a fan freaking tastic job of of building up signature charge. And that is why I chose it. It is one of the best spells out there for signature charge because that initial that initial launch of the kind of electric cross does a ton of damage and it passes through enemies. So it's...
it's just a really good one to use for building signature spam. And since our signature both does more damage and charges up faster in this robe, it's just a win-win. boss chamber so we can quickly teleport back to here we go I don't think I'm gonna have enough money to upgrade the robe this time and this isn't one where I would say it's like a necessity to do so anyway so take it take that with a grain of salt I know sometimes it's just best to upgrade everything you have not always the case though And I would say that was a very good first floor. Only took 40 damage. And it would have been better to take no damage, but hey, you can't control, you can't necessarily control everything. I suppose for, I suppose that's another thing that I'd like to talk about real quick, just for those of you who are either just getting started with this game or friends. <laughs> Or frankly, for those of you who play any any game that has kind of a high skill ceiling, is don't get down on yourself if you don't do perfectly. And this is advice that I need to take for myself because I hold myself to really high standards. And, you know, that tends to get me in trouble more often than not, let's be fair. But don't feel like you need to always be perfect. That is a very unhealthy mindset to get yourself into. And it's just going to lead to you being very difficult on yourself to having... To, to giving yourself, you know, mental problems. And it's, yeah, it's just like, don't expect yourself to be perfect. It's a very unrealistic goal. Like, in order to be good at anything requires practice. Like, don't expect yourself to just be an instant prodigy at everything that you do. Make sure that make sure that you understand that you understand for yourself that mistakes are going to happen. This is something I need to I need to remind myself while I'm playing Splatoon because I've. Alright, I'm going to admit something with Splatoon. I think I've admitted it before, but... But I think it's worth pointing... I think it's worth pointing out again, because what I'm about to explain to you is a very unhealthy mindset, and I don't want you guys falling into this, but... I have this really bad habit in Splatoon where I keep telling myself I, can, I should be doing better than this. I, I should not be losing the engagement that I'm losing, and... It's gotten to the point where I will very literally beat myself up on it. And I'm aware that what I'm doing is super unhealthy and not and not good. But my mental state is I'm just again being very honest, a bit of a weak one. guys to jump. And there you go, because of the power of twin turbines, we got three signatures. Just back to back to back. Did it feel good? Oh baby, it did. That's It's an exceptional feeling when you can get that to work out for you. 
Okay, so I would normally be all for taking Mercenary's Dagger. The reason why I'm not is because we're still on the we're still on the first floor. We're still a lot of game ahead of us. We still need to spend a bunch of money to get ourselves up and rolling properly. By the way, the reason why I took ignition drive is because it works on a very similar on a very similar wavelength to Aqua Beam, and I just thought that I just thought it it made good sense. Uh, I don't really feel the need to explore the rest of this level, so we'll just move on. Bottom line: don't don't let yourself fall into the mental traps I've let myself fall into trying to practice and get really good at Splatoon three. Don't literally beat yourself up over over something like that. If you're if you're having a hard time and you're making you're making mistakes that you would normally make in a game, the best thing you can do is take a break and come back to it later. Treat yourself with respect. And I'm, tell I'm telling you that even knowing that I'm someone who has a hard time doing that myself, because I don't want to see you guys fall into the same mental health traps that I'm falling into. Treat yourself better than I treat myself, please. And I am learning. I'm learning how to... How to much more properly respect myself, my time, and my abilities. And I'm aware of the idea that I should not be expecting to be freaking perfect. It's just a very difficult habit to unlearn. But I am trying, and I need to do better. Just, not just, not just for my own sake, but for you know the sake of the people around me have seen me do have seen me do that, and probably are wondering to themselves, "Hey, are you okay? That's, that looks really unhealthy." And it is. It is. Really I probably should, because it's extra movement speed. Yeah, I'll go back and grab it. By the way, that's just extra movement speed for every Arcana you have that's on cooldown. So that actually it works kind of counterintuitively on a tempo build, because you're trying to get your spells to be on as little cooldown as possible. And for what it's worth... Ooh. That was really bad. And yes, I'm aware that there is a that there is a cursed relic that reduces your cooldowns to next to nothing, but it has a really adverse effect on the enemies that you'll be facing. Like it makes them either faster or stronger or perhaps both. And that's something I should have also brought up yesterday and just didn't think about it. But that particular relic, although fun to use, can be really dangerous to, to try to take with you. My recommendation on that front is, if you are going to take that particular relic, just be fair. Alright, what do we got? 
this is the second time the game has asked me to take the yeah, to take this, which I probably will just because it's a really good. Just because it's another really good get off me spell that falls into the same vein as ignition drive. And Aqua Beam. Alright. And yes, I could have just purchased it earlier, but I feel doing it the way that I did not only gave me the hit. <laughs> Not only gave me the spell for cheaper, but gave him, but gave me another option that I can pull out, which will be useful in the shoe lane, because I'll have another fire-based spell that will be really effective. Ooh! Hang on, those spell thief socks might have a use, and if I don't, if I don't end up finding the mercenary, not mercenary dagger, the hunter stiletto, then I know what I'm going to be doing with. <clears throat> I know what I'm going to be doing with uh, with that noxious dapper cap as well. Sorry, sir, but I have a better option for for relics I don't need right now. You showed up at the wrong time. But you know what you should do, Kremeyer, is take some of those relics that I've been selling you, bring them back to the world of Undermine, and help out the peasants. They could they could really they could really use the support. God, there's a game I haven't played in a while, and it's a shame, because it's a roguelite that I really, really like. Like, I think Undermine is a great game, I just haven't been playing it much recently. Also, if you, as you can see, Ignition Drive also brings up your special pretty quickly. Sorry, I've got Splatoon on the brain. I'm calling it my special. Goddamn. Yeah, if you guys are into modding the game, you should, you know, let me use the Kraken Royale and the Booyah Bomb, damn it. Just imagine, you get all the way up to Sura, you've been you've been fighting hard, you're ready for your victory, you got your signature spell ready, you make him vulnerable, and then boom, ten of misses. No one ever no one ever said that the specials had to be fair. Oh, nice, I pushed him into the fire. Like, hey, what do you think you're doing? No one said you could step out of the fire. Get back in that fire. Okay, well, this I want because I want it. This I want because of Mimic. This I want because of Mimic. This I want just because. 
And this I want because of Mimic. Now, we could just go trade everything in now, but let's wait and see if we get another get another freebie from this fight. We did not get another freebie from this fight, but that is okay. Let's go turn in all of the relics that we don't want. Alright, so we want to keep that, keep that, that can go, keep those, that can go, keep that, that can go, that can go, keep that, that can go. There you go, plus 30. I think that looks pretty sound, don't you think? And don't forget, the Electrifying Smock is also helping us out with our cooldown charge. <laughs> oh, I screwed up. I wanted to have the... Fire Seekers ready. a classic example of everything going wrong. And again, that is why I say, please treat yourselves with a little bit more kindness than I treat myself. Don't beat yourself up over things like that that are sometimes hard to control. I will repeat it to the ends of the earth if I have to, but yes, I find mental health to be extremely important, and I want you guys to be taking care of yourself. I done did. Let loose with the old Kamehameha wave there. Um, oh, hello. Let's see, how many cursed items do I have? Two. That still makes that worth taking. Um, I have nothing melee, so that's not worth taking. I don't care about that, I don't care about that. Alright, cool. Um, yeah, there's nothing here I really want. So easy to prep a good old good old fashioned Kamehameha. And as much as I love the drill, I'm gonna stick with the dragons. Don't get me wrong, I love that drill, but I don't think it's I don't think it's the right move.
Ooh, new computer loads this so fast. Okay, screw you guys. I was completely overdoing it. Definitely grab that. You never you never know when a little extra defense will be helpful. If only I could have found the ancient fountain pad. That would have just broken this broken this this run wide open. It's already pretty broken. Crap those, beautiful. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Oh, shoot, what have I done? Come to think of it, because I am... Because I am wearing orange and firing off big beams of energy, this is kind of just a Goku build. I mean, you might want you, you might want to represent Goku a little bit differently than a bunch of, like, long-range elemental spells, but, I mean, hey, it's at, the, at the very least, it's a Kamehameha build. We, we, at least, we at least have, like, Gohan or Krillin here. But I will call it I'll call it a Goku build because Goku is the more recognizable character. Though honestly, fans of the series will recognize everyone that I'm referencing and just be like, yeah, I get it. Hmm. Thank you, Doctor. Alright. We even have we even have rejuvenating health like a Saiyan. You know, or like a space marine, depending on what you think is more relevant to the situation. Alright. No sense in sticking around here, let's just move on. Okay, that, that didn't go so well. I like the idea of the hammer, but we are not Thor, we are Son Goku right now.
And Kamehameha build doing what it does. here that I really want? And the answer is no. Do I think this build is good enough for, for you know, Ultra Instinct Sura? Maybe. But I'm not sure I feel like testing my luck right now. Considering what I was just saying about being in kind of a poor mental state, I think it's one of those things where I will... I will wait on handling Sura, and I know that's kind of a sore spot for some of you guys because you really want to see me do Sura, do Ultra Instinct Sura, but I just don't think this is the right run. Megalodon Tooth came in handy there, and so did the uh, <clears throat> so did the uh, cushioned flip flops. So there you go. In my opinion, this is definitely an S grade relic right here. This it's iffy, but if you have the right build, it really pops. So I wouldn't say it's like super low tier. I would say it's situation. But let's be fair. Sometimes situational can be better than something that's just always good, because one of them it's like, oh yeah, sure, it's just something you always take. The other one is, you might not always take it, but when you do, it shines. And baby, did it just shine there. As did the cushion flip-flops, honestly, so. There you go. <clears throat> Thank you very much for watching. That was actually a really fast run in, com in comparison to how my runs normally go. Seeing under 30 minutes is actually pretty nice, and seeing, seeing the way that I play, so not bad. Not bad at all. So, <clears throat> you guys want to you guys wanna try out this build? Check it out right here. I'm not sure I would consider it a strong enough thing to call it a full-on build recommendation, but definitely try out Fury Robe plus, plus Aqua Beam. It's... A be it's a beautiful call out to everyone's favorite Saiyan. Which, honestly, I, I say that, but most people's favorite Saiyan is Vegeta, so meh. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Thank you guys very much for watching. You know, comment, subscribe, share, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and I will be seeing you. Time to go do some laundry.